everyone and welcome back to Feature Highlights on Pipso TV channel. My name is Sinisha and today I'm going to show you how to set up the integration for WordPress Event Manager. This integration is not available in basic and standard bundles, so if you want to use it, you'll have to upgrade your license to one of the ultimate bundles. WordPress Event Manager is a free plugin that can be downloaded from WordPress plugin directory. Here, I will leave the link in the description below, but I will also show you how to install it from the WordPress dashboard. So let's get straight into it. Before using this integration, you need to make sure that you have ultimate bundle license. You can go to the pricing page and click on this link over here to see what it's included in different packages. As you can see, Event Manager integration is not included in basic and starter pack packages. To upgrade your starter or basic license, go to your profile on pipso.com community, then navigate to your profile over here. Click on Purchases, then switch to Licenses, find your license that you want to upgrade and click View Upgrades. Now in the page that opens, you will see a lot of different options with the different prices. These prices are prorated and depends on how many days you have left on your current license. So this upgrade cost may be different for you. Once you upgrade your license, you will have the access here to download all additional plugins. But right now, we are only interested to the event manager integration. You don't have to download it here. We will install it from the WordPress dashboard. The installation requires two steps. We need to install the Pipso integration plugin and we also need to install the base plugin. So let's first install the Pipso integration plugin. Go to your WordPress dashboard, hover over Pipso and click on installer. In the installer, after it checks your license, you will get the option to automatically install all the different plugins available for your license. Find the WP Event Manager and click on Install. Now, it will automatically download the plugin from pipsa.com website and install it on your site. All you have to do once it is installed is to activate it by clicking on Activate Link. And that's it, plugin is activated. However, if you go back to the dashboard, you will see this error message saying that WP Event Manager is required. Click on it and install now. Now that base plugin is installed, activate it. And as soon as it's activate, it will be redirected to the setup wizard for the WP Event Manager. Don't skip this wizard and continue to page setup. In this page, it will create the pages for the WP Event Manager that are needed for the proper operation of this plugin. Click on Create Selected Pages And then you can go to settings. Once in the settings, I want to divert your attention to three configurations. First one being the event submission and moderate new listings. New listing submissions require admin approval. This will be enabled by default, but in our testing, we are going to disable it. The second options are event categories and event types. You can go to each of them 
and create event category or event type. Few of them are already added. And finally, field editor. This field editor allows you to have all kinds of different fields for uh, creating events. You can delete the fields by clicking on this Adds button or simply add a new field by creating, let's say, select or checklist event category save changes and it will allow me to list all the categories that we have here and bring it all the way to the top event title should be on the top okay save changes and now go to the pixel configuration switch to the WP Event Manager tab and scroll down to find this front-end event management option. It will be disabled for you, but you must enable it if you want to create events from your profile. Then go to your profile page Click on events, create, and this will allow you to create new event. Okay. Now I'm going to delete some of the fields off screen to keep this form a little uh, a little organized a bit better and i will see you soon okay so i rearranged my fields in the field editor to keep only few ones for a very simple form so let's create an event let's call it trip around the globe choose a banner for it Okay, and add some description. Hopefully, you'll be more creative than I am. So, start date will be this date. Start time exactly at noon. End date will be the same as the start date. You cannot choose earlier than that. E end time will be, it has to be a little later. What did I say? Exactly at noon, right? That's exactly at midnight. Okay, exactly at noon. Here, you can add the organizer and the venues if it's applied. Click on the preview and this is how your event is going to look like. Submit listing and because we selected here in settings that event submission doesn't require uh, admin approval. That's why our event is listed successfully and you can click here to save it. This is how it's going to look like. Okay, I am going to attend this event by default because I created it. Now, 
Let's go to the Pipsol settings in the Pipsol configuration. WP Event Manager. And let's enable the activity stream for new events and activity stream when someone joins the event and activity stream when event is deleted. Pay attention though, these two features are still in beta, so enable them at your own risk. Next, this option absolutely must be enabled so you can see the uh, events from your profile. If you don't want to show the events on profile, then feel free to disable this. Okay, from here, if I disable it and save the settings, let's see what happens. Okay, let's wait for the options to be updated. Now refresh our profile. And as you can see, there is no events. I cannot see the user events from, from the profile. So keep this option enabled. If you want if you want the events tab to be only visible to the profile owner, enable enable this option. Otherwise, keep it disabled. Showing the filters on display options. Let's save it for now. Refresh the page. Go to events. All right, so uh, displaying options, uh, they will be sorted by the, the event start. And I want to show filters as well, to show categories in event types. I will rather keep this disabled on my, on my site because I disabled the event, uh, event categories in, and event types in field editor. So it does not apply to me, but if you want to, you can enable this and it will show like this. Save the options. Refresh the page here. And here you will have a lot of different filters. You can filter by keywords, location, data range, category, event type, or just simply all events created by me and a couple of more options. Let's come back to the PIPSO configuration part and Enable uh, RSVP. Yes, if you want to, uh, your if you want to allow your users to uh, to uh, say that they want to join or participate to, to the event, this must be enabled. Attendees in a sidebar, it will show ten attendees in a sidebar when you go to the to to the event. Let's check where will that show up when you go to when you open the event all right 10 attendees will will show up here if i if i choose just five and say save then only five people will show up here and finally you want to enable the uh, the two columns in box view and 
Pipsol rubber. Pipsol rubber is probably the most important option here because we want to wrap entire uh, entire event manager into into our own styling. So notice the change right now. It's very subtle, right? And if you go to the profile, switch to events. Now it looks kind of different. And much better, right? Remember how it's on this page, let's open this in a new tab. There we go. If we disable the wrapper, save page, let's refresh it now and refresh this one now. Now it uses the event manager styling, but if we bring it back, it will use pixel styling. So keep this enabled. And finally, in single event views, we can decide whether to show pixel outer info or not. This is totally up to you. It's a really uh, small box with the Pipsol username and the profile link will be shown in the sidebar of the single event view. That's purely cosmetic. So, now that we have all of these options enabled, let's try to create a new event by going to our profile and then on Create. All right, let's choose the title, choose a file for the background. Oh, I think I chose the same one. Never mind, we'll still use that one. Description. Start date is going to be this one, time, uh, ninth, uh, wait, it's a, it's a gala dinner, right? Okay, start is around 7 p.m. and date is the same, and time at 11.30, but not a.m., but p.m. Okay. Preview. And submit listing. Now go to the events. And you will see it already starts to look much better. Okay, let's check what happened on the community page. Okay, Philip Jordan created an event. And this is the event that has been created.
when you click on it, you can see more info about it. Okay, here it is. Now I am log logged in on the site as a different user. And if I go to the event, I will get an option to choose whether I want to participate or attend or not attend to it. So as soon as this option becomes available, let's say that I am going to attend this event and that's it. If you reload the page, you will see yourself as an attendee, but most importantly, in the community page, there will be a new activity stream item saying the Debra is going to this event. There you go. If I log back in as the user who created the event, now I can see the notification in my top right corner saying that Debra is attending this event. If you want to disable notifications per event basis, simply go to the event page and click on Disable Notifications button. Once clicked, you will never get any notification when someone is attending your event. And that will be all for today. If you find this video useful, please like it and then subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. You can also follow us on social media. Links will be in the description below. I'd like to thank you all for attention and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.